I want to read one scripture to you. And it's found in Luke chapter 23, and verse 33. Luke 23 and verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there, there they crucified him. And the male factors were on the right, one on the right hand, and the other on the left. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right and the other on the left. I didn't put this in here, but that next verse, part of it says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. I want to speak on this thought for just a little bit this morning. Thanks to Calvary. Thanks to Calvary. And you can be seated. There was three crosses. One dying in sin. One dying to sin. And then one dying for sin. Yes. And the one that was dying for our sins was the Passover lamb. The anointed sacrifice. The divine healer. The divine deliverer. The anointed one. The promise keeper. The reigning king, the soon coming king, the fourth man in the fiery furnace, yes. the faithful bridegroom, the living hope, the rock, the morning star, the lily of the valley, the way, the truth, the life. God himself yes. rose in flesh by a man called Jesus. Amen. That is the one that was dying for our sins. And he was submitted to the ultimate plan. Amen. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, Jesus did not hide. He did not run, nor did he put up a fight. When they came to, to get him, he surrendered to those Roman soldiers. He knew it was a part of the ultimate plan. Amen. But look what Jesus had to face. Look at the treatment that he faced. They spit upon him. They slapped him. They shamed him. They beat him. They whipped him. And you see, when Jesus, when he went to the cross, he was the ultimate. He was the final sacrifice. His skin was ripped off of him. His beard was plucked out. He had pierced his head with thorns. And his hands and feet were nailed through. And his side was pierced with a spear after he was dead. And the sacrifice of Jesus completely did away with the animal sacrifice forever. The animal sacrifices as we find in Hebrews 9 and 9, they were a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make the person doing that service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. The verse 11 says, But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. And verse 12 tells us in Hebrews 9, neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood. I love this. By his own blood, he yes. entered in once into the holy place. Yes. Oh, we ought to be thankful for Calvary. Yes. Amen. Yes. He entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. And it goes on to say that for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ. We ought to be thankful today for Calvary because he went one time 
into that holy place. He sacrificed one time. Now we don't have to bring an old bloody animal to an altar. We can walk right on in. See, the blood of animals, they had to be shed over and over and over again. This is the Robin, the blood of Jesus was shed only one time. Amen. I want to stop and say something right there. I, I've heard a couple songs that, that are out, and they're great songs, but they're wrong in certain lines. And, and if we ever learn some of these here and sing them, I would ask to change just one word. And some of those songs, and I heard one of them at camp meeting, and it said that the blood of Jesus was spilled. That is incorrect. When you speak of spill something, you, you spill something, it's an accident. But my Jesus going to Calvary was not an accident. My Jesus taken and been slapped in the face and, and beaten and the skin ripped off of him and him being nailed to her. It was no accident. His blood was shed purposely to fulfill the ultimate plan that God had for you and I. In Hebrews 10 and 12, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, Hebrews 7, 27, this he did once when he offered up himself. In Hebrews 9, 28, Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. In Hebrews 10, 10, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews 10 and 14 says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You see, the blood of Jesus that was shed is powerful. It is a saving blood. It is a healing blood. This blood paid for our sins so we don't have to go to hell. This blood justifies us before holy God. This blood redeems us. This blood brings us peace. This blood lets us enter into the holiest place before the throne of God. This blood sanctifies us. This blood cleanses us from all sin. Aren't you glad and aren't you thankful for Calvary today? Aren't you glad that you don't have to go out into a field somewhere and pick out a lamb or pick out a cab or anything else like that and sacrifice it before the priest? Yes, amen. But we can walk in now because of Calvary. We can go straight to Brother Jesse, the throne room. That veil was ripped. We don't have to rely on somebody else bringing a sacrifice just to be praying that it will be rolled over. Our sins will be rolled over for a year. Yes. But one time is all it took. And the shedding of the perfect Lamb's blood. And it still flows from Calvary today. Don't you understand that even though we're unfaithful, he is still looking out and saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Think about church all the times that you have been unfaithful. Maybe you're here today sitting on one of these chairs and you've been unfaithful. This is how much he loves us. This is how he shows us his mercy and his grace. He's still looking out over you. Father, forgive him. Father, forgive her for she knows not what they do. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for Calvary. Jesus had gathered with his disciples together for the last supper. And as they gather around him, he holds up the cup. And he begins to explain that this blood, this blood is the new covenant. And that his blood was sufficient. Whereas is the blood of goats and, and bulls for 4,000 years, they had not met the requirement for fulfilling the law. But his blood. 
His blood is sufficient. And this is what he was talking about when he said that he had come to fulfill the law. Not do away with it in Matthew 5 and verse 17. He says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That he, in one selfless, loving act, would do what no other sacrifice had been able to do. And would begin a new covenant. Aren't you thankful for that new covenant? He will begin a new covenant whereby we can be saved. Are you thankful for Calvary this morning? When is the last time you sat down and in your prayers or, or maybe just crossing your mind and you say, Jesus, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you that you gave it all up, that you you went through and fulfilled the ultimate final plan as the ultimate and the final sacrifice. Are we thankful for Calvary? This new covenant, a blood covenant that if anyone would trust in the power of his blood, hear me out, if you would trust in the power of his blood, you can receive redemption. You can receive atonement. You can receive healing. You can receive protection. You can receive deliverance. You can receive strength. You can receive transformation. And the greatest thing of all, you can receive salvation. Are we thankful for Calvary this morning? There is wonder. As the song goes, there is wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Power to take away the sins of the world. His blood that was shed on Calvary. His blood that still flows today. His blood can still take the worst of sinners and wash their sins away. His blood can take today those of us that are sitting in these seats uh, that have sin in our life. Uh, and it could be anyone. Uh, I'm not pointing out no one. But his blood today can still wash away your sins. Uh, his blood today, when you make your way down to an altar and you say, God, forgive me. I've been trying to my best to live for you. But there's things in my life that are holding me back. Uh, it's that same blood uh, that can wash away those things in your life. It's that same blood that can put you back on the right path. It's that same blood that says that wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. It's that same blood when you murmur, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. It's that same blood that flowed over 2,000 years ago that will flow over you today. Are you thankful for Calvary today? washes away our sins. It has the power to redeem us. Someone once said, I believe there was a song, when your back is to the wall, remember his was to the cross. When your back is to the wall, remember his was to the cross. It was nailed to the cross. When, when, when is the last time you thought about what he went through at Calvary. When is the last time you pulled out the, the Easter story and read what he went through at Calvary? He didn't just do it for anybody. He did it for everybody. No matter the race, no matter the nationality, he went to Calvary so that you and I would have an opportunity to turn on that road that we was on, destined for hell. Right. And now you and I, because of his shed blood, 
and all that he did at Calvary, we have the opportunity that even though we are unfaithful, we can turn around and go right back to him. We can turn around and go, can you think about just, I mean, this is not trying to be gory, but Brother Jesse, can you think about just stepping in into a shower of his blood that's still cleansing today? You see, the devil wants us to, to stay back when we start to become unfaithful. The devil wants us to stop coming to church. The devil wants us to stop reading. He wants us to stop praying. He uh -huh. definitely doesn't, Sister Jennifer, want us to begin interceding. Why? Because the devil knows that even though I talk about a shower, it don't have to take a shower, but just one drop of that blood yeah. that was shed that many years ago is still just as powerful. It's still just as and he can wash everything away and make us new. Thanks to Calvary. I want to say a couple things, or a few things about Calvary. This is Calvary, where we see man at his worst, but God at his best. Calvary. Where every person must come if they expect to be saved. Calvary, where his blood was shed, not spilled. Calvary, wherever or where we come with our sorrow and we leave with his joy. Calvary, where Jesus died that we might live. Calvary, where we hear the greatest story ever told. Calvary, where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. Calvary, where we come with our ruin and we receive his peace. Calvary, where we come with our bitterness and receive his blessings. Calvary, where a Savior died and salvation was born. Calvary, where we come with our darkness and we receive his light. Calvary, where we come with our hell and receive his heaven. No wonder the songwriter said, my ransomed soul can only sing of Calvary. Come on, church. Somebody ought to be on their feet today just thanking God for Calvary. I know it's not a shouting. I know it's not a running message. But we have a lot to be thankful for today when we just go back and look what took place. Thanks to Calvary. Yeah. Oh, just give me yeah. that. To Calvary. No, I'm not trying to put him back on the cross. He'll never be there again. But I'm trying to put us back at Calvary because that's where our life has the new opportunity to begin. We've got to know that I'm a new man. Thanks to Calvary, you're a new woman. Thanks to Calvary, you don't do some of the things you used to do. Thanks to Calvary, we don't go to some of the places we used to go. Thanks to Calvary. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I challenge you today to go back and read and read slowly of what Jesus went through. He went through for you and I. He went through for you and I knowing that there's going to be times we would be unfaithful. He knew we would fail. He knew that there's times we would turn away from him. He knew that you would reject him, but he's still with the Calvary. He's still with the Calvary. Brother Stewart, I haven't rejected him. 
the moment you become unfaithful, you've rejected Jesus. But today, he still would go to Calvary if he needed to do it again. But the Bible's already said it was once for all. It was one time for everybody. So what he shed back then, it's still powerful today. It's still flowing today. And it's falling upon us today if we would let it. Thanks to Calvary. Thanks to Calvary, I have the opportunity when my time comes or when he blows that trumpet. Thanks to Calvary, I can stand before him not as my Savior, but as my judge. Thanks to Calvary, I can now have the opportunity to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. But if I reject Calvary, I'll hear, depart from me. I never knew you. Do I have anybody in here today that is thankful for Calvary? Brother Stewart knows we all fail. I know we all make mistakes. I know we all slip up. I know we all turn in a different direction on this, this, this road called life and our spiritual walk. But if you're hearing this this morning, you have the opportunity today to get on your feet, come down to an altar and say, God, I want to turn myself around. God, I want to, I want to step back in. I know I don't need a shower of it, but I just want one drop of your blood. I want to tell you as I'm closing right now, there is still room at the cross for you. There's still room at Calvary for you. The ground is level at Calvary. Thanks to Calvary. Would you stand to your feet? I'm not going to hold this long. I'm going to ask you one time. Is there at least one person that needs to get back to Calvary this morning? Is there one person? Come on, come quickly. Do you need to get back to Calvary? Do you need to be reminded this morning of what he's done for you? Jesus! Ask him to forgive you right now. And what you ask him.